people have commented on how suited we are for each other and how we get together so well and what a good relationship we have and we have we do have um but drawing on that we're just thinking about what it's been like to live in such a small space as an arrowbow and make such a big life change as we have done and we've come up with five reasons that we think it's worked for us and that probably you know would be appropriate for everybody else to consider if you're making thinking about making a big life change yeah it's not uh I think these these apply to people who are thinking about alternative ways of life, aren't they? Other than they could be for any way of life. But if you're looking to just downsize into a small space living, this is how we felt that uh, has been our success. Yeah. So this yeah. is Rich and Fran's top five secrets to a successful narrowboat life. But this is just what's worked for us, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, it's just, not definitive you know. and it's in no order <laughs> whatsoever. It's just random. <laughs> but anyway, number five, just do it. The one thing that I would say we don't regret is that we just went straight into this. Um, we did a little bit of research about the boat, but I'm so glad that we didn't wait even six months, let alone a year, yeah. waiting for the perfect boat to come up because we've spent a year having fun and travelling. Um, just don't hesitate. If you've got something that you want to do, just get out there and do it and enjoy it. Yeah, because if you, know, if you are thinking of living an alternative lifestyle, you've obviously thought about it and maybe done the sums in your head. And if the sums add up and they work and you want to go and do it, there's just just do it. Uh, a year ago when we were looking at boats we met a chap who had just mm -hmm. taken his boats for the first time on the water at a marina and uh, he'd been looking for two years for his perfect boat and in those two years he'd sold his house but then rented a flat for two years uh, looking for his perfect boat. There's never going to be the perfect boat out there, there's always going to be something wrong with the boat. But that's not the issue. It's, you, you know, you're not living on a floating flat. You're living on an arrowboat. It's uh, completely different. We've, we've already realised that there's things that we would have had differently on a boat. But I certainly wouldn't have waited a year to find this list of things. No. You know, just... We've, we've had a whole, as Fran says, we've had a whole year of discovering such a lot of the network, meeting so many great people, and uh, wouldn't have changed it for anything. And I know it's a cliche, but who knows what's round the corner? No, you don't know what's round the corner, believe me. Anyway. Next one. Number four, relationships. <laughs> well, you can do this one. <laughs> I don't know what to say with this one. Be considerate. You've, you've just really got to living in such a small space with somebody. We're, I think we're very, very lucky. We do get on so well together. Yeah. But you just have to give people a little bit of space and time as well. I don't think we ever really go off separately. We, we occasionally need... go for a walk on our own. Yeah. But... Don't feel the need. We need space from each other, do we? When we're lucky in that sense. It's just that you're living in a small space. So also another thing with regards to a relationship, make sure it's with the person you really want to be with. Um, because that would be uh, an issue, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I don't, a six I don't foot wide boat. think you can do this if you're at a point in your life where you've got to try something different because you're a bit bored with each other. I don't think this is no, going to work. No, it's not going to be a make or break <laughs> thing, is it? So, yeah, just give each other a bit of time. It's a, it's a big thing to do and every day is different, all new experiences and you've just got to give each other a little bit of time to adapt, I think, to it. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, three, I think this is Fran's favourite, I think. Don't try to live your land life aboard. Um, presumably, if you want to try a different lifestyle, there's something about land life that's not right for you, unless you're doing it purely for financial reasons. But let things go. Accept that your life is going to be completely different. You don't need all the luxuries of land life and the more you can get let go of i think the more chance you've got of being yeah, happy on yeah. the boat that's not to say that you're going to live a hard life you know and yeah if if people have got the money to have a boat built and big wide beam with everything on it then great 
but don't expect that I don't think just take a stop a step back from what you're doing do you agree with that I do um you, you know there's the, all this all the things in life that we used to have on land you know the the, the washing machine microwaves television you know all these things that suck you in and anyway the more things you've got on board the more things can go wrong yeah but the advice i would give you if you're into a hobby uh, photography like i am i am interested in photography i love music make sure you've got something with you on board that allows you to keep that going um because uh you know you, you need that outlet don't you like with your weaving yeah you know. yeah fortunately Franz yeah. weaving doesn't cost any electricity <laughs> stopped at their good point there number two <laughs> try to see your problems as a challenge and enjoy the learning experience yeah this, this is i have i struggle with this. <laughs> this is my I baby a little bit this, yeah. you do let get things get on top of you a little bit sometimes don't you you know when a lot of things go wrong it becomes i've got so much to do but um i don't know i think if you can see all these little things that go wrong that need dealing with as a as, uh, i hope to say a learning curve but it is it's it's a learning opportunity every t every time something breaks or something goes wrong with the boat we don't know about it we're reading about it learning about it it's good for your brain it's good to keep you active and we're learning so much and don't see it as a bad thing try and see it as a good thing it's something that's good for you when you're learning to do something yeah. new i when i i get sort of uh, i don't know where to turn at times and uh like now the inverter has packed up on us and it looks like we've got to buy a new one and uh but what i've got out of it i've taken the inverter to bits and seen inside it and realized you know that there are fuses inside and uh and I've learned, you know, more about the wiring as a process. Uh, trouble is, it's something I don't want to learn. <laughs> I just want to do doing the things I like to do. But you know, you can't have it always, can you? So I think if you if you want a life without, I think if you want a life when every day is predictable and you know what you're going to be, and you want to be in control of everything, then I don't think living aboard an airboat, certainly not continually cruising as we are. I don't think that would be for you. I think you've got to accept that there's every day has its own little challenges. Just try and enjoy it. It's all part of the life. I do lean on you, don't I, when it comes to challenges, and you always seem to come up with the uh, right approach. Yeah, what yeah. I do is yeah, but I never know what I'm talking about. It just gives you the confidence <laughs> does, to do what you want to do anyway. She, it's me over the head with a rolling pin. <laughs> Tells me not to be so stupid. Just, just don't be frightened. Don't be frightened of letting, no. don't be frightened of asking for help either. And things will go wrong. Um just expect it and mm. uh yeah. And finally number one and I think I know we said at the beginning that this it wasn't a list of any importance in, in in order of any importance but i think this is my favorite and my top one and that's slow down and be flexible it's not easy it no. it's, it's possibly the hardest thing to do because we are brought up in a world where you have to conditioned i You're, think yeah. is my favorite word it is we're conditioned to be busy we're conditioned to be doing something one of the questions that people will ask you when they first meet you is what do you do for a living mm. as if that's the all important thing or what have you done today as if you've got to achieve something every day well you don't have to do you mm. yeah i think it's okay to be idle and just to sit and enjoy i'm not saying be lazy I'm just saying it's okay not to do anything and just watch and listen and absorb what's going on around you and when you've been working for 40 years of your life every day it's not easy to do that no it? it's not it's not easy because you're you know you're regimented to get up at a certain time and go to bed at a certain time so you can get up at a certain time and uh, it's difficult um, some days we wake up at seven we'll have a cup of coffee and then the next thing we know we've had breakfast and we've looked at the crossword and we're still in our pajamas at 11 o'clock and uh, some people will be horrified at the thought but 
And I know that can't be us, the case it? for everybody as well. No. I know that some people will still live aboard a boat and have to work, you know, and that's fine. Many people will want to do that. But at least in your evenings and weekends, if you're going to really enjoy the narrow boat life, I think you need to slow down mm. on it. It's to get the most out of it. Aside from the, the mental aspect of it, the physical side of slowing down on a boat, you have to slow down because it could be dangerous. Yeah. Running across locks, skipping on and off the boats, you know, walking along the gunnels, even getting in and out of the boats. I mean, so many times I've forgotten the key and not realised I've rushed through and banged my head on the door frame. So, yeah, slowing down and... Uh, and just linked to that, you did say was being flexible as yeah. well. And that's, you know, don't sweat over not being able to do a certain thing on a certain day just because you got it into your head to do that. Well, you like know, decorating. Well, today, <laughs> no, I'm not even going to go into that. But just take each day as it comes. And if the circumstances, the weather, the conditions, whatever, aren't right to do what your plan was... Don't worry about it. Just make another plan <laughs> yeah. and do plan B, plan C, plan whatever. Just, yeah. So that's it. That's our five secrets to a successful narrowboat life. That's just our heartfelt uh, expressions, if you like. And uh, it might not be the same for you, but that's how we live our life on board Narrowboat Constanza. And it's what's helped us make a success of it, I think, isn't it? Yeah, so, I think so. Yeah. So... Short Here's to many sweet. more years. Short and sweet. There'll be a proper vlog coming up in the next few days when the inverter's fixed or a new one's in put in. But in the meantime, we're going down the pub to charge the laptop up. Pint of Wi-Fi. Pint of Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.